Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Episcopal Church for this service of the Holy Eucharist for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. We're delighted that you've joined us. We're delighted also to welcome John Schultz, a longtime professor of religion, a former Roman Catholic priest, and a beloved parishioner here at St. Mark's with his wife Karen as our preacher this morning. Our first hymn is, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. Offer to the Lord a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. There's a wideness in God's mercy like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in his justice, which is more than liberty. There is welcome for the sinner, and more graces for the good. There is mercy with the Savior, there is healing in his blood. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given it your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the, in the land for these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for your many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and a lord of all his house and a ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me the lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen. You shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring back my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew that falls from Hermon and falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordained the message, life forevermore. Romans chapter 11. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and, and also, also with, with you. you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached him and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. 
Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what, what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of, the, out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, and slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed immediately. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In another life, what seem, in what seems now like in a galaxy far, far away, I was affectionately referred to as Father John as I ministered in the Catholic Diocese of Saginaw, Michigan. I loved that role, my heart was in it. But after a number of years, I realized I could not fulfill that ministry while living alone, and so I resigned my commission and married Karen, my wife of 43 years, this past Thursday. However, despite all that, because my tradition says, John, if you're married, you may not minister publicly, I am still ordained and thus the stole that I'm wearing symbolic of that fact. When I was in the church last week going through the protocol of this situation, preaching without a congregation, I told Father Justin, uh, I said, you know, whenever I'm, as many years as I have been resigned, whenever I'm in this role of preaching, uh, it's like I enter a, a time warp and I'm pulled back and here I am. And I'm very grateful to Father Peter as rector of this congregation, also Father Justin and Reverend Elizabeth for their invitation to preach to you today. Let's begin by inserting ourselves into today's passage from Matthew's Gospel. There's an unspoken prejudice here, I think, that underlies this account. Matthew simply IDs the woman in that passage as a Canaanite. But as such, she would have belonged to a centuries-old line of idol-worshipping polytheists. The Canaanites enjoyed a whole pantheon of gods and goddesses, and among these were chiefly Baal, the god of fertility, and one of his consorts, Astarte. When the Lord, when the disciples were saying to Jesus, Lord, send her away, I really think underlying here was, uh, and they said, she keeps crying out after us. I, I really think what they were meaning to say, and we're covering it up, Lord, Lord, psst, Lord, she's a Canaanite. She's one of those people. Enter then a visceral, perhaps a visceral negative feeling that we call prejudice. A little sidebar story here. 800 years before this account, the prophet Elijah was, uh, pre was prophesying up in the territory of the Canaanites, and the priests of Baal there were giving him a very rough time, to say the least. Finally, he got tired of this. So he said, I tell you what, I challenge you to a contest. You priests of Baal, you prophets of Baal, 
You build your own altar here and put on it your whatever animal you want to have as a holocaust. And you pray then to Baal and ask him to send down fire from heaven to consume the, the animal offering. And let's see what happens. And I'll build my altar here and I will put a holocaust offering on it as well. But we'll wait first. I'll wait and see what happens with you. So they went on and on and on and hours passed and they were screaming and carrying on and moaning and they had slashed themselves especially in their scalp and blood was coming out as was their custom and absolutely of course nothing happened. And then Elijah said to uh, his uh, attendants there, fill seven buckets of water, pour them all over the animal on the altar of the Holocaust, cover the altar with water, dig a trench here, fill the trenches with water, and then he prayed to his God, Yahweh, Yahweh in the Hebrew. And suddenly fire came down from heaven, consumed the animal, consumed the altar, lapped up all the, dried up all the water in the trenches. End of story. Back to the Canaanite woman. She cries out and asks Jesus to cast out a demon from her daughter. But he doesn't react neg negatively at first based on her ethnicity as such. Instead, he simply states that his obligation is, first of all, through the children of Israel, the Jews. But she keeps pressing him. And this time he tries a different tactic. It's not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. This sounds like a horrendous term, but given the idiom of the day, the term was used in sacred scripture to mean anyone who was a non-Jew. Non I want to take a look, if we, if we forward to Luke's gospel in chapter 7, he changes it and he mitigates the expression. He doesn't say dogs, he says pups. And he said, it's not right to throw scraps to the pups that are under the table, um, under the children's table. And uh, noteworthy here is the fact that, that Luke places both children and pups in the same house under the same table. Notable. Another story. When I was a teenager growing up in Bay City, we had, uh, uh, I suppose Snoopy was a mongrel dog, certainly a mixed breed. But to look at her, you would say she was a, a shrunken English setter and an excellent hunter. Anyway, Snoopy was my dog, and I taught Snoopy to sit up and beg for food, and she could sit up on her haunches for five, ten minutes at a time till you looked at her and gave her a, a snippet of whatever, and then she would be satisfied. Well, I, uh, I used to sneak food, uh, trying to carry on a table conversation without averting my, my gaze to my mother, I would try to surreptitiously sneak a little orts under the table and Snoopy would grab it out of my hand, but I always got, usually got caught, John, don't feed the dog at the table. More seriously, let's switch now to chapter four of John's Gospel, to the passage that I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, are quite familiar with. It's the story of Jesus meeting the, uh, the woman at the well of Jacob. John not only notes that she was a Samaritan, but in ther in parenthetically inserts Jews have nothing in common with Samaritans. Nine centuries earlier, approximately, they had separated themselves from the southern kingdom and formed the northern kingdom of, of Israel. And for a long time now, they no longer went down to the temple in Jerusalem to worship. And since the time of the exile, some five centuries before, they had become a sort of hodgepodge of various ethnic groups, thanks in a large part to the Assyrians who played a major role in making that happen. Bottom line, they were certainly no longer considered Jews. There's a double whammy here, one that could have been the basis for a very negative, prejudicial situation. Not only was it unheard of for a rabbi to speak publicly with a woman, 
But Jews would never request water or food from any Samaritan because both they and their utensils and their food were considered unclean. When they returned from having gone into the city to procure food, the disciples expressed their shock and dismay at what they saw. But none of them dared question the master about it. At any rate, what does Jesus do? He proceeds to cut through the societal norms of the day, this anti-Samaritan prejudice, and treat the Samaritan woman with both dignity and respect. Now we switch to Luke's Gospel, chapter 7. The cure of the centurion's uh, servant. As a Roman centurion, he would have been in charge of approximately 80 to 100 soldiers. Centurion literally in Latin meant 100, but that wasn't always true. Anyway, as a centurion, he was the embodiment of the enemy, the face of the occupation forces. He represented Rome, detested Rome. Now, as a Jew, Jesus would have had every reason to react negatively to his request, which had been sent through emissaries. Emissaries came and they said to Jesus, you know, the centurion asks that you come and cure his servant who is lying very ill and perhaps near death. But um, it's enough for us to take the word back to him. But Jesus, no, I'll, I'll go. But as he gets nearer to the centurion's house, the centurion sends other messengers to say, Lord, I am not worthy that you should even come under my roof. And that's why I was not even worthy to come down in the first place and make my request in person. But please, I know what authority is, and you have it. I have it, you have it. Say but the word, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus, instead of falling into the pit of prejudice as him being a Roman, he accedes to the centurion's request as stated. Lastly, we let's take a look at also Luke, but now chapter 19. We find ourselves here in the town of Jericho in the story of Zacchaeus, who was not only a tax collector, but chief tax collector in that region. And Luke notes he's a very wealthy man. Now, tax collectors were Jews employed by the Romans to collect the Romans' taxes. The Romans had it all figured out. If we use Jews to collect the taxes, they'll get more than we ever could have gotten ourselves anyway. And people like Zacchaeus were considered by the Jews sellout traders, and they were very despised by their own people. And not only were the tax collectors such as Zacchaeus, paid by the Romans, but they also were on the take, and they siphoned money off the top and pocketed something always for themselves. The Romans knew this, the Jews knew this, but it was the system. And at any rate, tax collectors were definitely considered nothing short of sinners. Anyway, after being, uh, being very short, Zacchaeus climbed a sycamore tree to get a better look at Jesus as he passed by. He couldn't see over the heads of the people in front of him. And not only does Jesus, is he not only sucked into the, the uh, prejudice that would have surrounded the very name of Zacchaeus and his profession, but he looks up and he says, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down, because this very day I'm going to stay in your house. Zacchaeus scrambles down quickly, and he addresses Jesus. Lord, not only will I give half of my wealth away to the needy, but if I have defrauded anyone, which is kind of a joke because he certainly had, if I have defrauded anyone, Lord, I will, I will return fourfold of what I have defrauded. And so we have here just a few, just a few examples of how Jesus acted in the face of negative prejudice 
and perhaps even racist, racist attitudes. In a short few years, his followers will get the moniker Christian, which first began in the city of Antioch. And many scholars think it was, uh, it was coined not by them, but by others who were not Christians, uh, who, who were not belonging to the, their, their system of belief in following Jesus, as a term of derision, those, those Christ chasers, those Christianoi. But the followers of Jesus said, that's exactly what we are, and they accepted the term Christian, and so it began. But even before that, they were known as followers of the way, the way, and it's always capitalized. This term is mentioned in, in uh, Acts four times by Luke, who wrote, of course, in Greek. The noun that he chose in Greek was hados, and its first meaning was a walked road. Uh, and when Jerome translated uh, from the Hebrew and from the, from the Hebrew Old Testament, the Greek New Testament, into the Latin Vulgate, he translated the term hados as via, if you prefer the Italian pronunciation. Via meaning the same thing, a walked road. And as a matter of fact, and, and via, like the Via Appia, the Appian Way, which extended south of Rome through the southern gate all the way down to the modern town of Brindisi in southern Italy. It was 350 miles long. You can still go there today, go through the southern gate, and walk for a few miles, in fact, a number of miles on the old Appian Way, the Via Appia. The secondary meaning of hados, however, and via, was a custom, a manner, a way of doing. And so these early Christians were committed to thinking and acting according to Jesus' manner, according to his way. And even though we ourselves are now centuries removed from them, and we have become very institutionalized, and, but we who still take Jesus seriously and call ourselves Christian, whether we are Catholic or Orthodox or Episcopalian or Congregationalist or Lutheran, Presbyterian, Methodist, Baptist, or whatever, in the face of so much prejudice and racist attitudes that exist in our own society today, we too are still bound to walk the road, the Hadas, that Jesus walked. Amen. Together, let us join with the church around the world in proclaiming our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That, that we, we all may, may be, be one. one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your, your name, name may, be may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers. That, that they, they may be faithful, faithful ministers, ministers of your word, word and sacraments. sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That, that there, there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That, that our, our works, works may find, find favor in your sight. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for the birth of Charles J. Toranzano, son of Beth Noble and Jake Toranzano, and little brother to Rosie. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and, and praise, praise your, your name, name forever, forever and, ever. and ever. We remember all those commended to our community for prayer, especially Adrian, Allie, Alice, Anne, Betty, Bobby, Bob Short, Brian, Chris, Clara, Claudia, Courtney, Dave, David, Diane, Ellie, Florence, Fred, Gordon, Harry, Henry, Jamie, Jean, Jeff, Jen, Jim Betridge, Julia, John, Karen, Kathy Lynn, Lana, Lori, Leora, Lou, Lisa, Lucy, Marilyn, Martel, Mary, Megan, Mercedes, Michael, Mike, Morgan, Nikki, Owen, Preeti, Ray, Richard, Richie, Ruth, Sean, Sophia, Vivian, William, and Winston. Have compassion on all those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they, they may, may be, be delivered, delivered from, from their, their distress. distress. We pray for all who have died, especially Annie Mae Dupree, grandmother of Jalen Sims, John Hepburn Jobes Jr., my uncle, Jeffrey McGargy, cousin of Amanda Sutton, and James R. Ganusi, brother-in-law of Jean Ganusi. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we, May we also, also come, come to share in your heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the, the glory, glory of, of your, your name. name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Share with one another a sign of our Lord's peace. Good morning, 
and welcome again to the service of the Holy Eucharist at St. Mark's Episcopal Church in New Canaan, Connecticut. We are a community of love formed by the grace of God, seeking to follow the practices of a Jesus-centered life, a, a life that is on the way, which John Schultz preached about so beautifully this morning. We hope that you will join us by helping us to get to know you. There are many ways to do so. You can join our mailing list or fill out a simple form on the newcomers page of this website. No matter where in the state of Connecticut or the country or the world <laughs> that you are, we want to be your family in Christ and to get to know you. So please do be in touch with us. We're delighted and grateful to have heard readings this morning, the profession of the Word of God from Stan and Holly March and Caroline Gillespie Greer. Thanks so much to all three of you. And thanks also to our virtual choir and our soloists and our intrepid director of music ministry, Ned Tipton, as always, for our service music and hymns this morning. And to John Schultz, again, for preaching the Word so powerfully this morning. We are so, so, so grateful, John, to be your holy home, and we are blessed by your continued ministry in our presence. Thank you so much for this morning. Next week, there's going to be a guest preacher who you also will not want to miss, Rob Schwartz. Uh, Rob is our wonderful administrative coordinator. We love Rob, and we know that you do too. Rob is a seminarian in the United Church of Christ and is in active ministry at Woodmont United Church of Christ in Milford. They have been so kind to give Rob the Sunday off so that he can come to us and preach the gospel to a whole bunch of Episcopalians and their friends. We are so looking forward, Rob, to you being with us. We will be honored to have you in our pulpit just as we were by John this morning. We are hard at work at St. Mark's to be the body of Christ during these pandemic days. And you can make a categorical difference in the life of this parish and the work of God in the world by supporting us financially. There are many ways to do so. You can give to us online. You can send us a check through, uh, through snail mail. You can even give by text. Instructions about how to do so are all found on our website. Thank you deeply from the bottom of our hearts for your support. I note, too, that the, if you're local to New Canaan, the New Canaan Food Ministry is still in need of replenishing their stores. The food pantry is hosted here at St. Mark's, and they're in need of supplies. If you're in New Canaan, you can make a donation of food on Monday mornings at the food pantry at 8.30, or alternatively, you can bring food with you to the 9 o'clock outdoor Eucharist that we've been hosting here on Sundays at St. Mark's. Wherever you are this morning, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy communion follows, and I pray that you would make your spiritual communion this morning by the power of Jesus' Spirit. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give God thanks, thanks and praise. praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to, to you, you forever, forever and, and ever. ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By, By your will, will they, they were created, created and, and have, have their, their being. being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and turned against one another. Have, have mercy, mercy, Lord, Lord for, for we, we are, are sinners, sinners in, in your sight. sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his, By his blood, blood he reconciles. Reconcile By, By his, his wounds, wounds we, we are healed. healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of power and might, And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Rachel and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord be, known be known to, to us in, in the breaking, breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us, us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against, against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the and power, power and, and the glory, the glory forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. 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 
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us, us keep, keep the feast. feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed upon him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and ever-living ever God, we, we thank, thank you for, for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your, your Son, Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, and for, for assuring us in these holy mysteries that, that we are living members of the body of your Son and, and heirs of your eternal, eternal kingdom. kingdom. And now, now Father, Father, send, send us, us out, out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve, serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. Lord. To, to him, him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit be the honor and, and glory, glory now and, and forever. forever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world to make disciples who live a deeper life in Christ, a more holy communion with one another, and a greater love for the world. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Time.